How are you doing my lovelies? So in case you do not know, my name is Adriel. I am an American who lives in Paris and I have been in Paris now for right at four years. Actually moved four years ago, the day before they locked down the country in connection with COVID. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what you should be wearing if you plan to come to Paris in the months of April or May. The thing to remember about Paris is that it is incredibly rainy during the spring months and the temperature is kind of constantly changing and so you really can have like three seasons in one day. You can have winter, you can have spring, and then you can have a burst of summer for an hour and then it all goes back downhill. So today I have pulled some pieces from my wardrobe that I'm going to use to show you exactly what you should be keeping in mind when you are packing for your trip to Paris. So let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, when it comes to what to wear in Paris, you're going to want to, of course, look at the weather report before you arrive, you know, kind of check to see what the weather is looking like, you know, about five days before you start packing. What is it looking like for the next 10 days? But here's one thing I want to remind you, is that Paris in the spring, so Paris during March, April, May, what happens is that the weather is literally constantly changing. So you are having lots of sun, right? Like our sun has reappeared and so we're all in incredibly like, good moods <laughs> because the sun disappeared on us, uh, you know, during the winter. So we're getting the sun again, but it's also going to be raining a lot. That's one thing to really keep in mind is that it rains all of the time in the spring in Paris, particularly throughout the month of April and also in the month of May. And while there may be days where it's just a complete downpour all day, there are going to also be days where it just starts raining just unexpectedly. So first things first is you're going to want to make sure that you bring an umbrella and you're going to also want to ensure that you have a layer on that is both waterproof and warm. One of the things that I often hear people say when they are coming to Paris or when they just came to Paris in the spring is, oh my gosh, it's actually really cold there. Yes, it is very, very cold in Paris even during the months of April and frankly until early to mid-May. So with that said, let's start with outerwear. When it comes to outerwear, you're going to want something that is both warm and waterproof. So this is a coat that I tend to wear a lot during both the spring and the fall months. It is a cashmere and wool blend and this coat is actually quite warm and I can wear it kind of throughout the day and yet it doesn't have a lot of bulk on it. So it keeps me warm but without a lot of bulk. This is something that I'm probably going to wear on a day where it's telling me that it's probably not going to rain. Here's the thing. Even if it may say it's not gonna rain in Paris, still bring your umbrella. But just remember that. <laughs> but this is something that I'm likely gonna wear on a day where it's saying it's not gonna rain, it's saying it's gonna be relatively warm and sunny. So if it's saying it's gonna be high of like 50 degrees, I'm probably going to wear something like this because it's going to be warm, but also it's not a super bulky, heavy coat. The wool and the cashmere blend is really, really nice. And as you see, this is a really fun pattern. It's colorful. You can, you can do that. You should not think that you cannot wear patterns or colors when you come to Paris. No, 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 that's not true. You can do that. So yes, 100%, this is something that I would be wearing, particularly in the month of March and the month of April. Now on days when it might be raining or it looks like it might rain, this is another coat that I'll wear. This is a Burberry coat. It is quilted and on the outside and it's pretty water resistant actually. So it's a really nice coat for me to be able to wear on like a cooler day here in Paris. And it's a really great spring coat. So because it has a hood, which is essential, but then also because it's kind of water resistant it's going to keep me dry throughout the day if it starts to rain and then also because it is quilted it is going to keep me warm. You, now you are also going to start to see trench coats come out a little bit more basically by the time we get to April and May and this is a Burberry trench coat that I bought forever ago. It has the quilted liner on the inside and then of course it's water resistant so it's a really great option for kind of those spring days when it starts to get like a little bit warmer but it's not warm enough where you can kind of go without a coat. I really like this option and you're going to see a lot of trench coats in Paris in April and May 
but you'll also see a lot of other coats, right? Like, it, don't think that you have to go out and buy a trench coat. You don't. These are just examples of what I already have in my wardrobe. The purpose really is to aim for a coat that is waterproof or water resistant and that is going to keep you warm because you are going to be walking around all day and you're going to want to be warm. One of the things that you'll actually see us do a lot here in Paris is that we will have on, you know, maybe a lighter coat or a lighter jacket, but then we'll have a vest on underneath it for an extra layer of warmth. This is kind of how we tend to be able to wear our, you know, kind of thinner uh, coats or lighter coats, you know, even during cooler months and during cooler days is that we layer it with a insulated vest on the inside and then we put, you know, the our, our warmer, our coat on over it, right? So this is something you can also think about if you are somebody who, you know, thinks like, oh, I don't really like to wear a coat that much. Wear a vest, wear a vest underneath your coat so that you can stay warm. So one of the rumors I often hear is that Parisians do not wear jeans and you shouldn't wear your jeans to Paris. Bring your jeans to Paris. People here wear jeans year round. Jeans are the thing. And really any style of jean works. So you can do wide leg, straight leg, skinny jeans, anything, it doesn't matter. These are some of my kind of wider leg jeans that I just bought. I got them from the American brand Boyish. And as you can see, they are like a medium wash jean and then they have just a little bit of fading. These are great. These, these are a wonderful jean. They're perfect. And they're also easy to wear a base layer under because they're wider leg. These jeans right here are a straight leg jean. They are Levi's and they just have this little kind of cuffed, you know, part right down here. They are, again, a really comfortable jean. And because they're straight leg, it makes it easy to wear a base layer underneath them. One thing I will note is that Levi's jeans are like the thing here. The French love Levi's denim. They absolutely love it. And so as a result, you will see a lot of people wearing Levi's jeans here in Paris. So, you know, don't be surprised by that. Now, the one thing that I will note when it comes to jeans is that you are generally not gonna see a lot of ripped jeans here, okay? And when I say that, I mean jeans with holes in the knees or holes all over the place. Yes, you will see plenty of jeans of a variety of different styles, you know, maybe even with a raw edge, but you are just really not going to see jeans with holes. So if you have jeans with holes and that's like normally your thing, leave that, you know, at home because that's going to be something that kind of makes you stand out as a tourist. When it comes to things though like jean wash and jean style, that varies all over the place here. So really feel free to wear your jeans, whatever style you have, whatever is most comfortable for you. No need to go out and buy something different or new because what you have, I guarantee you, you're going to see it when you come to Paris. <laughs> if you're not a jean person and you don't want to wear jeans, that's cool. Wear your pants, right? You can wear your corduroys, you can wear your chinos, you know, feel feel free to wear that. You can wear your black, you know, pant, flowy pants if that's your thing. The one thing to keep in mind is that anything that looks like a legging, mm -mm, you're not gonna wanna wear that. Leggings, athleisure, anything like that, that is not Parisian. In Paris, even if you are going to work out, you do not wear your workout clothes to go work out. You have on a perfectly normal outfit, you go to wherever you're supposed to go, and then you put on your workout clothes there. Or maybe you have your workout clothes on underneath your outfit, and then you take out your take off your, your outside clothes when you get there. So if you are walking around Paris in workout attire, if you want to wear leggings, anything like that, you are going to stand out as a tourist and that's just not gonna be a good look. Now, I've already talked a couple times about standing out as a tourist, and I think I should explain why that is something you have to be considerate of. If you stand out as a tourist, basically what happens is you make yourself a target for pickpockets. Pickpockets are a huge, huge problem in Paris. And the thing is, the pickpockets are going to see you before you ever see them, and they're gonna take your stuff off of you before you even notice it. It's one of the reasons why it is so, so important to just try to blend in a little. Because if you don't, all you're doing is you're making yourself an easier target for the pickpockets. So a couple other ways that your fashion can kind of help 
mitigate or minimize your risk of being pickpocketed is when it comes to, for example, where you keep your wallet, your keys, your passport, any of that stuff, you wanna make sure you're keeping it in kind of the interior of your jacket or um, inside a pouch that's inside your purse. You really wanna make sure that those things are not in your back pockets nor in your front pockets. Literally, do not put your phone in your back pocket. It will be gone before you even know that it's gone. Don't put your phone in you know, your coat pocket. Again, it will be gone before you know that it's gone. Really, instead, you wanna keep your valuables close to your body in kind of whatever way you, you, you can. You might be saying, listen, Adriel, I'm not a pants girly. I wanna be able to wear skirts. If you wanna wear skirts, that's great. Literally, you can wear any type of skirt you want in Paris, right? So you can wear mini skirts, leather skirts, flowy skirts, mini skirts, whatever. It's perfectly cool. The one thing that I will note is that if you are coming to Paris in the spring, so you're coming in April or May, generally, if you wear a skirt, you are going to wear it with black tights underneath. These are a pair of black tights that I have. They are really comfortable. They're nice, thick, really like 80 denier, I believe. So these are a really great option. Or you can do kind of the fleece line tights as well. Choose kind of whatever you want. But generally, if you're wearing a mini skirt and say it's in April, March or April, frankly, even kind of May, early May, you're gonna wanna wear tights underneath. One thing to know about Parisians is that Parisians really dress for the season, not the weather outside. So even if it is an unseasonably warm 70 degrees outside, you are not gonna see anyone walking around in sundresses and shorts. Instead, you're gonna still see people dressed the way that you would dress if it was a normal 50 degree day in spring. So this is one of the things you really have to keep in mind when it comes to Parisian fashion and really kind of what it is that you're packing for your trip and what it is you're wearing each and every day. Let's say you love long skirts and you want to wear something long and flowy and lacy. You know, let's say you want to have like that great Parisian moment where you're, you know, standing, you know, next to the Seine on one of the bridges and you have on your flowy skirt. That's fine. However, just know you are going to stand out again as a tourist. And what is the thing about standing out as a tourist? It just attracts more attention of the pickpockets. And that's really the goal. That's really what you should be, your, your goal should be, is to kind of try to blend in a little bit more so that you kind of don't attract any sort of extra and unwanted attention. If you like a flurry, flowy skirt though, go with your flowy skirt, darling just pair it in a really fun way. Instead of pairing your flowy skirt with maybe a beret and some sort of floral over the top top, instead maybe wear this, you know, flowy skirt with a leather jacket. You know, so do something like, let's say I have this purple leather jacket, like, and it's a little bit cropped. Maybe do something more like this because this is going to kind of look a bit more Parisian than say if you're just kind of wearing this with a beret. Does that make sense? Now, if you are a dress girl, again, feel free to wear your dresses here in Paris. This is kind of a knit dress that I got from Cezanne forever, for not forever ago, actually, I got it this year. So this is kind of a merino wool knit dress that I have from Cezanne. I really like it. Again, I'm going to be wearing it with, with tights underneath it, so continue to keep that in mind. One thing I would say that you would probably want to avoid on the streets of Paris when it does come to dresses is something kind of like what I have on right now. Okay, so this is one of the skins, like kind of bodycon dresses. You are not going to see something that looks like this on the streets of Paris. It really is not necessarily Parisian style. This is definitely something, you know, even when it comes to wearing out, you wouldn't you wouldn't wear this out. This really is a dress that you're probably more so going to wear in your house. So you wanna keep that in mind. If you normally wear bodycon style dresses or super, super tight dresses, things like that, that's not what's really considered sexy here. What's considered sexy is a woman who looks classy, who looks well put together. So kind of the more skin you're showing and the tighter your clothes are, the more you're going to look like a tourist. And again, that's something you just generally are going to want to avoid. And I wanna be clear, I'm not saying that you have to wear something shapeless. You can still show off your shape, right? I'm just saying that super tight, 
body hugging items something like what I have on this bodycon style dress is really not something that you're going to see in Paris this is an example of a dress that is definitely kind of figure hugging but it is not like bodycon it's not kind of clinging to every single curve and this is something it's a long dress I got this from and other stories and it's really beautiful green color and this is exactly the kind of type of dress you would definitely see kind of moving around the streets of Paris something that is definitely a bit more Parisian than say kind of you know wearing something more along the lines of the skims kind of bodycon dress that I have on right now this is another dress another option for a dress that you would see this a style you know on the streets in Paris I actually bought this dress in Paris you know many many years ago so the, as you see it has this really cool pattern it has this little belt that kind of cinches it in the waist and it's kind of a long dress and one of the things I think that is great about a long dress is that if you don't want to have to wear tights underneath you don't have to and yet you can still kind of stay warm however I would still always recommend some sort of base layer because as I said the temperature is constantly changing in the spring and you're going to find yourself cold okay so a couple more things when it comes to Paris and kind of how you'll see people dressing you will see a lot of blazers you know women here love to wear blazers and you see them a lot in the fall a lot in the winter and then you also will still see some in the spring so just to show you a fun blazer that I have this is actually a blazer I got from a vintage store it's Simona Rocha and you see it just has all of these really cool ruffles here I'm showing you this as an example that you don't have to stick to wearing plain you know neutral outfits during your trip to Paris you can still wear the fun stuff if you have fun stuff in your closet feel free to wear it and I just want you to know that you can continue to express yourself in what you're wearing when you come here don't think that you just have to like completely tone down your wardrobe because you you don't what you have you have something that will work unless your closet is all athleisure which it might be in which case you're going to need to get some new things but unless your closet is all athleisure you're going to have something already that you can wear when you go to Paris so think about it that way you can shop your closet you can still wear the things you love and 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 and, and you won't stand out as a tourist if you're doing that another thing that you're definitely going to see a lot by the time we get to the spring is you're going to see more leather jackets more faux leather jackets so i have you know over here this black leather jacket this is one of my favorites it is my tried and true absolutely love this and i got this uh forever ago from from top shop it's like this cute little biker jacket i also have some from another brand called the mighty company which is a leather jacket brand based in the u.s so you'll definitely see leather jackets and also just as a reminder your jacket does not have to be just in black right like you can wear this uh, you know purple jacket I bought this jacket in Paris right like I bought this purple faux leather jacket here in Paris so I really just want to remind you you don't have to like ditch color if you like color you can wear bright colors don't don't be afraid of it it's really about how you wear them and if you want to know um, how we wear color in Paris and kind of how we wear pattern you can take a look at one of my videos it's on the three color rule and I talk about how in Paris you know you really never wear more than three colors per outfit that includes you know even neutrals and so you can use that to kind of give you more insight into kind of how you can style your color when you come to Paris now I have already talked about it already in this video where I've told you you know your goal really should be to stay warm and you should be mindful that you might have three seasons in one day so in that vein and then kind of keeping that in mind let's talk about what type of shirts or sweaters you can wear like what you can wear up top when it comes to tops really you have a lot of flexibility as far as what you want to wear so this is a really cute flowy top that I got from Cezanne you will see a lot of kind of flowy tops here it is very much kind of a style so definitely if you if you like flowy tops you don't have to ditch those you can continue to wear them even for your trip next option is button downs I personally love a button down shirt and this is a button down shirt that I got from Cezanne as you see it's white it has these cute little red hearts all over it and this is like one of my absolute favorite shirts so if you're looking for if you like button downs and that's what you want to wear you can still wear that this is very much like 
Parisian style is like a cute button down. So again, yet another option of something that you can continue to go with if you already like it and you have it in your closet. This is yet another option. As you see, this shirt is kind of embroidered. It has this little embroidery detail. This is again a very big kind of style of shirt you're going to see here is this like kind of embroidery, kind of lace detailing type shirt. So if you have those in your closets, you can wear those as well. And again, if you notice, everything I'm showing you has color you can wear color in Paris. Last but not least, we're gonna go with sweaters. I'm just gonna show you these two. This is a turtleneck sweater in this really bright, you see it's this bright red color. I love this sweater, this is one of my favorites. I bought it from a French brand. It's here in Paris, right y'all? So again, you can wear color, wear your turtlenecks, if turtlenecks are your thing, you can do that. Here is another option, is this sweater. Again, something that I bought here in Paris. The sweater has a really cool pattern. As you see, it has the color, you know, on contrasting collar, and then also some contrast on the, the arms, the sleeves. It's, it's fun, like look at this pattern. I'm showing you this all because I want you to know that you can also wear pattern if you like to wear pattern when you come to Paris. That's not going to be something that's weird. You're not going to see people without, you know, patterns on. So definitely, if that's something you like, you know, feel free to wear it. One thing I will say about color and kind of what colors to kind of keep in mind for the spring months is that, you know, you're probably going to be seeing kind of a shift into the lighter color schemes, you know, more, you know, light pinks, light blues, purples, that sort of thing, probably closer towards May, end of April and May, because frankly, that's kind of, you know, when you're really starting to kind of feel the, the, the season shift, if that, if that makes sense. So you will see, you know, probably more jewel tones, like like kind of um, darker kind of colors, you know, all the way through March, beginning of April, and then you're going to slowly kind of start to see like the shift into kind of a lighter and brighter color scheme as you get towards the end of April, beginning of May. So that's something also to just really keep in mind when you're packing for Paris is that, you know, you, you really can start doing lighter and brighter colors, you know, by the time you get to April. One thing we have to talk about, the ubiquitous beret. <laughs> so one of the things, I always see people wearing their berets, and I have plenty of berets. I am not going to tell you that you can't wear them in Paris. I'm just going to tell you that when you are wearing your beret, no matter how authentically Parisian you think you look, you unfortunately do not actually look Parisian. I'm so sorry, I hate to break it to you, I don't say that to hurt your feelings. The thing is, is that this is a winter hat. <laughs> This is a fall and winter hat. That's when you're going to kind of see the beret. You are really not going to be seeing the beret that much by the time we reach April. It's definitely solidly going to be gone by May. So if you're walking around in this, you're definitely going to scream tourist. Now, I know you may still want to wear your beret. And if you really want to wear it, that's cool. Just don't do it like this, okay? Like, just don't do it like this. You're not Emily. This is not a television show. Instead, wear it a bit lower, wear it a bit more like this, wear it like it's a hat and not some sort of pizza that you placed on top of your head, right? So wear it a bit more like this, a little bit off the side if you want it, and then pair it with something that's really toned down. So pair it with a black jacket and some plain denim and some plain shoes, right? Because that's really what's going to make you look a bit more Parisian is if everything else is toned down. If you have on this and then you have on this tool, a big tool skirt, and then you have on high heels, honey, sweetheart, my love, you're going to scream, I am a tourist and I'm here. And again, the only reason that's a problem is because it attracts unwanted attention from pickpockets. And unfortunately, also, in every culture, you have people who are more likely to cheat you if they know that you are a tourist somewhere. So really, I'm only telling you this because I just don't want you to get cheated or scammed anywhere. 
Okay, when it comes to what shoes you're gonna wear when you're coming to Paris in April or May, remember how I said that it's going to still be kind of cold and there's still gonna be lots of rain? So this is why you're gonna want shoes that are waterproof not water resistant you're going to want shoes that are waterproof and you are also going to want shoes that are frankly comfortable and going to keep your feet warm here is the thing you are going to do more walking in paris when you come than you probably do in like two months or three months or frankly even six months depending upon where you live in the United States. So it's just so much more walking here. The shoes number one hands down you're going to see on Parisians are sneakers. They wear their sneakers even when it is downpouring. Personally I do not like to wear sneakers when it's downpouring because I had a horrible experience where one of my sneakers turned out to like break during a downpour and my whole foot was wet. It was awful. So as a result, I don't wear sneakers, but French people still wear sneakers even when it's raining. Personally, I would actually suggest some low wellies. So these are my low wellies. I actually got them from the Steve Madden store, you know, when I lived in the US. And this is basically what I wear when I am walking around Paris and it is a rainy day. They have a good, you know, grip on the bottom so I don't slip, but also they keep my feet warm and dry. One of the things to keep in mind here is that the streets and the sidewalks and the metro stairs become incredibly slippery when it rains. I do not know what on earth the ground here is made with. It's like st not just stone. It's like 5,000 year old stone and it becomes so slippery when it's raining and you can fall. During my very first trip to Paris, I fell down the metro steps and it was miserable. I had on sneakers and I was just like, whoosh, all of a sudden I was looking at my feet and boom, I was on the ground and it was on the Champs Elysees and I had on white jeans. It was so, so cold and that was in June. It was so cold and I was in a lot of pain. It was just, the whole thing was bad. So this is why I have religiously since that day, anytime I come to Paris and it's raining, now anytime it's raining outside, I always just wear wellies because for me, this is how I don't slip and fall again. And when you fall in this country, I, because of whatever the ground is made of, it's the most painful fall that you will ever have in your life. It's it's truly miserable. So <laughs> um, you want to really just make sure to opt for just low welly boots. Now one thing I want to note is that tall wellies you really don't see here. You really don't see people wearing those. French people believe that those are like country shoes. Um, but I, as I always say, I am not out there hunting any quail. So I still have my tall wellies from America. Those are what I do still wear those, but generally if it's a rainy spring day, I'm going to wear these because I just, it, it, it's what's going to be comfortable, most comfortable as I walk around during the day. So I already mentioned Parisians love to wear sneakers, so you're going to see these a lot. Parisians absolutely love these Adidas sneakers right here, these Stan Smiths. You're going to kind of see those everywhere. And yeah, so if you have Stan Smiths, if you have Adidas sneakers, you're gonna see them everywhere. You're also gonna see like Nike, you know, Converse, everything. Like Parisians love sneakers, so you'll see this. These are a French brand. This brand of sneakers is called Moea. They're made out of like fruits and vegetables, and I think that's really cool. One thing that I will say is very unique about Paris is that you basically never see like clean white sneakers. People love to wear dirty white sneakers like the dirtier the sneaker the better so you will see like dirty white sneakers is a thing here so if you are someone who likes to keep your white sneakers white this is not the city to be doing that and if you are the type of person who like has some beat up worn white sneakers and you're like i can't wear these where i live bring those babies to paris because it's the place of the dirty white sneaker. And these aren't even like that dirty because I don't wear them like super, super often, but these are actually really comfortable. The Adidas Stan Smiths are also very comfortable. Personally, I think the Veja V10s are incredibly comfortable for walking around. I don't have any Nikes, so I can't really attest to that, but I have found all of my Adidas sneakers, whether they be high tops, whether they be superstars, etc. I found all of those to be incredibly comfortable walking around Paris. So really, that's what you want to keep in mind is you want a sneaker that is incredibly comfortable, incredibly cushioned, because 
your feet are going to hurt if you don't. <laughs> Another shoe option that you will definitely see kind of in Paris when you're walking around are loafers. Like loafers are a really great shoe I found because they tend to also be waterproof but then also comfortable and tend to have a grippy bottom. So these are my Tom Brown loafer slingbacks. Tom Brown makes incredibly comfortable loafers and so I really love these and I like the fact that they're slingback because it just gives it a little bit more of a fun style. In some of my other videos I've shown you my church's loafers, also really love those. The point is is that loafers are a really great shoe. If you have a really comfortable loafer with a really great grippy bottom, they are going to be perfect for walking around Paris in the spring. You'll also see a lot of chunky boots like Doc Martens. I personally don't have any, but you will definitely see that a little bit in the spring. You're going to definitely start to see it much less by like the end of April because it is going to be start it is going to be like getting a little bit warmer and so you're mainly going to see people in sneakers but definitely if you're coming in March early April and you have a pair of Doc Martens in there super comfortable yes you can you can bring those you can wear those you will see those on the streets of Paris now just want to touch on the topic of heels and boots so one I have these, um, you know, high boots with a low heel. You will definitely see women wearing high boots with a low heel here. You'll even see women wearing kind of that rider style boot. It's just going to become less common the longer you go into April. So by May, most women aren't, you're probably not going to see, you know, a knee high boot um, that much, mainly because as I said, by that point, you are getting summer for at least a couple hours out of the day. And so as a result, it's just, it would just be too hot. But you will see, um, you know, some high tall boots for a little bit while. If you're, if you're coming in March, definitely you'll still see that walking around the streets. And also kind of as you get into to April you're gonna kind of start to see it kind of pilter off. This is something where I, I again always see women wanting to wear heels when they come to Paris and it just kind of always makes my heart beat a little bit faster because it is really really hard to find comfortable heels to walk around Paris in all day long and I'm saying that as somebody who lives here and who loves absolutely loves to wear heels most of the heels that I brought from the United States, actually I'd say 90% of them, I can't even survive like an hour or two in Paris. They're just not made for the stone sidewalks and definitely not made for cobblestone. So, but if you really want a pair of heels and you want to walk around Paris with heels, I would strongly suggest Corel. My Corel heels are very, very comfortable. I would opt for a Mary Jane style, you know, if you're planning to come to Paris in the spring, that is what I think is going to be the most comfortable. So this is like one of, I have a lot of, I want to start off by saying, I have a lot of Corel heels, got a lot of Mary Janes, um, but this is one that I think is really good if you're coming here as a tourist. It, it has this very low heel, um, so it is perfect. You still have the signature Mary Jane look, and I always like a good sling back, so I think that that makes it fun, but you can also get the classic style. Personally, for me, this style is the most, the most comfortable, and this style is the pesh. Okay, so we are going to finish up the video with the rest of accessories. So we're going to do handbags and then just kind of some general accessories. So when I used to come to Paris, I used to take this long shot of tote. I would take it with me for every single trip. This one right here. And it is, I think, a really perfect option if you are coming to Paris. I just think like the long jean tote, you can put everything in here, you can throw it in, and 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 it's perfect. I so I am hands down a big believer in the long shot tote. However, if you don't have one, you don't need to go out and buy one. Let's talk about it. So another option is just to wear a crossbody bag. This is one, it's my favorite. It is my coach crossbody bag. I wear this basically everywhere I love it. And um, the reason why I say crossbody bag is because when it comes to a purse, if you are taking the metro, if you are taking public transit, there are pickpockets, right? I've already talked about it. And the great thing about a crossbody is that you can put your hand, when it's across your body, you can put your hand on it like this, 
And so then it, it, no one can open it kind of without your knowing, okay? And so this is why I like a crossbody bag. This is also the reason why I like the Longchamp bag. Because if you take a look at the Longchamp, when you zip it, right? Like so when you zip it all the way up here, you can put it on your shoulder just like this. And when you're on the metro, you can hold it like this. Now, you might be saying, but Adriel, I can't possibly get everything that I have in there. Oh, darling, I am already ready. Let me tell you what is going to make you look the most Parisian. Those tote bags that are in your house, bring one of them to Paris, okay? Because the way that Parisian women walk around the city is they carry their most essential things in their purse, right? Their purse is on them, their purse has their keys, their wallet, maybe their cell phone, whatever. But then when they are on the metro, they can put their purse in here, or, and if you put your purse in here, you still wear a crossbody, like do not just like throw your purse in there and just go about your life. No, 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 no. Instead, what you do is you can put all of your extra stuff in here. You keep your essentials, most valuable stuff in your purse, and then everything else goes in a tote bag. That way, if someone reaches a tote bag, what are they getting? They're getting your scarf, a book, your umbrella. <laughs> So this is one of the things that I think is quintessentially Parisian is that you always have a tote and then you have your small purse that is in front of you that has your essentials in it that you have close to you. And this is kind of one of the ways we, we kind of mitigate, you know, the, the, the pickpocket risk. You really are going to want to leave your designer items at home. So your Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton Chanel's, etc. You, you can't take that stuff on the public transport. It just creates way too much attention. You literally are like a moving target when you have those things with you in the metro. So I just think it's better, leave that at home. Leave your nice jewelry at home. You know, you just, you don't need to bring those things with you when you come to Paris. In addition to the tote, the most, the next most essential item that you will need if you plan to come to Paris is a scarf. Parisians wear scarves all the time, even in the summer they have a scarf in their bag, okay? So this is one of my more fashionable scarves. You see how colorful and fun it is? I got this from Madewell, you know, probably a, a two decades ago, like when Madewell was first started, like when I was in college. So I, I, I have this scarf, it's from Madewell, it's colorful, but also, you know, have a practical scarf, right? <laughs> You're gonna also probably want a hat to kind of keep your head warm. You may even want to bring gloves. Remember, the thing is that you can always take your clothing off, but the worst is when you're outside and you have nothing else to put on. Okay, so there are just a few more things I wanna make sure that I touch upon on you know what you should be wearing when you come to Paris, things you should be mindful of. So I've already kind of discussed that you know no real holes in the jeans, no athleisure, that's real, just really not a super big thing. You know, you can wear color, you can wear pattern, but you kind of wear it in moderation, right? You know, you, you limit it to kind of three kind of colors slash patterns per outfit. Also, when it comes to berets, you know, you wear it in a more stylish way, <laughs> you know? Don't just put it on your head and be like strolling down the street um, and just be mindful about kind of how you can blend in, you know, and, and, and staying warm in the sense of, you know, you know, like the bags you're bringing, you know, making sure you have a tote bag, those sorts of things. In addition to kind of those things to keep in mind, you just also kind of want to keep in mind that you don't have to go out and get a whole new wardrobe, right? You really can use what you already have in your closet. I mean, you are not trying to prove anything to anyone. There is no standard look here, right? It, it just, it, it doesn't. There are things that you are going to see more of, but there is no kind of one standard look, so don't feel so much pressure uh, when you are packing for your for your trip, you know, that like, oh, I wanna look like the Parisian girl in the magazine, like, just like, don't worry about that too much. You're you're going to you're going to be fine. Now, when it comes to packing and how much of each thing to bring, let me say this. I think you should definitely bring, you know, one, you know, pair of underwear for every single day and then a couple extra because, you know, things can happen. Um, I also tend to take the view that you should bring, you know, if you're coming for let's say 5 days, I would say bring 5 days of base layers. If you're coming for 2 weeks, bring 
five days still of these layers because you can you can wash them. I would say that if you're going to be here for let's say a trip of five days, um, a couple pair of jeans, you know, just you can wear your jeans and repeat. If you want to do a skirt or a dress one day, you know, bring that. If you have, if you decided, oh, I'm just going to bring a couple pair of jeans and you're going to be here for five days, then bring, you know, a couple sweaters, you know, and then a few different tops, right? Like three tops and two sweaters so that you can have like kind of that variety of, of mixing and matching. If you want to do a dress, bring a dress. If you want to bring a skirt, bring a skirt. You know, one thing to note is that when it comes to going to dinner, Unless you are going to a really nice restaurant, like a Michelin star restaurant, you can generally go to dinner in whatever it is you have been wearing all day, right? So if you are going into a cafe, you are going into a bistro, you can basically just wear what you've been wearing all day. However, if you're going to a much nicer restaurant, you may want to swap out the jeans for a nice pair of black pants, or you may want to throw on a dress for something like that. And, and think about it like that way. Or if you already decide like I'm going to a nicer dinner tonight, you also can just like wear like, it, it, you can wear like this this gray dress that I already showed you. Any of the dresses I showed you would kind of work for, for a nicer a nicer dinner. You can, you can also check out any of my other videos. I have tips if you're coming as a solo female traveler, but those would also apply even if you're not coming as a solo female traveler, if you're coming in a group. I also have other, you know, lots of tips and advice throughout my channel on, you know, how to style outfits and that sort of thing. And obviously like those videos are very much based upon what I've learned living here in Paris and about French style. So definitely take a moment and go check any of those out. And one last thing to note. So one of the things I've noticed is that very rarely are there videos on what a man should be wearing if he plans to come to Paris. That was actually one of the things my dad kept saying. It's like, what do I wear? I know there aren't a ton of videos on that <laughs> for men. So I will just give you kind of a few like brief tips on things to keep in mind and then maybe what we'll do if I can convince him we can convince my French boyfriend to do a little video with me on what a man should wear when he comes to Paris. As far as men do not keep your wallet in your back pocket put your wallet on the inside of your jacket pocket um, because again pickpockets one thing you will see a lot of men carry here is they carry for lack of a better word, it's like called a little pochette. It's really small. It's a sling bag. It's a really small bag. Um, you will see men carrying that a lot as a way for them to kind of have their valuables close to them to keep kind of keep them safe. Um, another thing you will see, you know, men are obviously they're wearing the sneakers. They're wearing denim. They're wearing, you know, the the you know trench coat style like the barber style coats um you're seeing you know men wear that just in darker colors um you will see men wearing you know khakis uh, you can also see men wearing corduroy uh you will see men wearing loafers again really the same principles apply okay as to what to wear as a woman really the, it's 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 really about you know staying warm staying dry and um having making sure you you know you, you're wearing your layers right and you're dressed appropriately for the weather that is that is outside so i will definitely um you know i can definitely ask juju if you have any specific questions for those of you who do not know who juju is juju is my little french man he is adorable I love him. So uh, that's why I call him Juju. And so if you have any questions, you know, about men's fashion, what to wear, definitely let me know. Um, let me know if it would be helpful if I did a video with him on that so that you can kind of get like a slightly better set. Bonjour, bonjour. So between the time that I recorded the video originally and today when you're seeing me it has been only two weeks but the thing is that i have received so many messages on what to wear to paris um in between that time that i wanted to do a little addendum kind of addressing some of the questions that i've received so i want to start by giving you guys a few more ideas on what to wear when you're coming to paris so 
from when I recorded the video, I talked a lot about layers. And the thing is, I want to be clear, when I'm talking about layers in kind of two senses. So I think base layers are still necessary if you're coming in March or if you're coming, frankly, even in early April. I think it's it looks like it's spring outside. It looks like it should be nice. It looks like it should be like, you know, you should be able to shed those layers and yet you can't really. So I really still think that base layers are important to bring if you're coming in late March or very early April, kind of maybe the first couple of weeks of April. However, after that, I would say that it's more so layers in terms of cardigans, um, sweaters, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So you may not need to have on a base layer underneath your jeans, for example, or underneath your dress, but you may want to have a base layer in the sense that may you, you may want to have a layer in the sense that you're wearing a cardigan, you still have your scarf, you still have a nice, you know, trench coat or whatever coat that you have that will kind of keep you both warm and dry. Okay, so that's kind of what I, I want to make sure that that is, is very clear that when I'm talking about layers, I kind of mean two different things. Another thing I want to show you as far as outfits, I want to give you just kind of a few more examples of what I'm talking about when I'm saying, um, you know, talking about dresses and skirts and that sort of thing. So I already talked in my original video, I talked a lot about denim. I think denim, frankly, is a great piece to just wear to Paris if you're coming in the spring. So if you're coming in March or April or even early May, I think denim is really an easy choice. Um, if you have, you know, comfortable pants, um, that would be a nice choice, but they, they would need to be kind of nicer pants. You know, I'm not talking about leggings like I did already mentioned, but here are some ideas. So for example, if I was wearing denim, I will pair it a lot in the spring with a leather jacket. So this is one of my favorite leather jackets. As you see, it has this fun fringe in the back. This is an example of something that, you know, it's not just black, it's white, but it also has a fun element. And yeah, you can still wear this in Paris. This isn't gonna make you stand out. This is gonna be cool. It's really about your, your styling, right? Like if you throw this on with a beret, it may not be as cool, but it depends on how you wear your beret, right? So this is something that I would say is that you would see me walking through Paris and I totally am gonna look like a local in that. So if you have something like this, yeah, if you have leather jackets, totally bring them. But I also talked a lot about color in my last video. I mentioned that, you know, Parisians do wear color. Parisians definitely wear color and one area you're gonna see that are the dresses. So I just have a few more dresses I wanna show you as like options if that's really what you wanna do. This is a red wrap dress that I got from Cezanne a really long time ago. This is something that you'll definitely see, I would say by May. You know, I wouldn't say that you're necessarily gonna really see this look yet in April because it's still too cold. But by mid-May, maybe even late May, depending upon kind of how soon it is before things start to get warm, you're definitely gonna see something like that. So if, if you like dresses, you like a wrap dress, yeah, you can wear, if you have a red one like this, you can definitely do that. You know, don't, don't worry about that. Here's another example of a really cute dress. This is, um, you know, not a wrap dress, but a nice little flowy dress, kind of short. This is another something that, another kind of type of dress I would say you're gonna see by May. Probably not as much by April, but definitely by May, you're gonna maybe see kind of people wearing this. It really though does depend. It's very weather dependent on kind of how soon spring comes in the city. So um, it's looking like spring might kind of happen a little bit early this year. So as a result, you may see kind of dresses like this a little bit sooner. This is another dress that I would say that you're gonna see probably in starting in, in May. But this type of dress, because it's so long, like this dress is super, super long. It goes all the way down to my ankles. A dress like this, I would actually say, you will even see it starting at the end of April. So if you'll notice, there's kind of a difference in the dresses, right? These two dresses are a bit, you know, shorter. So they hit either at the knee or kind of mid calf, right? So as a result, these types of dresses, even though they're long sleeve, you're just not really going to see them that much until you get to May. But in April, notice the difference. This dress is super long. It goes all the way down to the floor. It goes all the way down to my ankles. And it's also obviously long sleeved. 
as a result, this is a dress that your type of dress you're more likely to start seeing at the end of April. Why? Because it has you more fully covered and that's what you're going to need because it's still not going to be super super warm. It's still going to be a little bit chilly even in April. Now that's unless spring, as I said, comes early. Now if you are a skirt girly, let's say you like slip skirts. Slip skirts are definitely something you will see Parisians wear. You'll see them on the streets of Paris. But I will note, you're probably not going to see a slip skirt like this kind of style until probably May. And I would say it's gonna, you're going to start seeing this right about mid-May is really when you're going to start seeing this. Why? Because it's just, it's just not really warm enough yet. Like it's not really that, that comfortable to be wearing a slip skirt until you get to mid-May. And unless, again, of course, like spring kind of comes a little bit early. But generally, you're not going to see this until like mid-mid-May. Now the thing is, what am I going to pair it with midway? mid-May? Well, even mid-May, early May, it's not probably going to be super warm, so I pair it with something like this, a light cashmere sweater, and then I pair it with, you know, this, this type of skirt. So this is just to kind of give you another sense of what the weather is looking like. Also, as far as the sweater, you'll notice it's a bright pink color. You can wear your colors in Paris. This is a cashmere sweater. I think cashmere sweaters are perfect for April and May. I think they're perfect for layering, right? Like having as layers because they keep you warm, but it's not like a lot of bulk. So that's kind of one other thing I want to keep in mind. I want you to keep in mind. Now, one more thing. Okay, so the last update I want to give you is as far as shoes go. So I talked about how dirty white sneakers are really the thing, right? You know, people have lots of dirty white sneakers and that's what they wear. I would also note, because someone asked me this, people also do wear colorful sneakers. They wear high tops, that sort of thing. So these are one of my colorful sneakers. They are beiges. And as you see, they're this beautiful kind of maroon um, color. I love these. I, I rock these babies. I also have some metallic ones. I have like some pastel ones. So I just say this to say like, yes, you can wear colorful sneakers. If that's your thing, go for it. Another thing I already mentioned, um, you know, loafers. And I talked about how loafers are really great. I am wholeheartedly a fan of loafers. I see that I, I wear them all the time and you're definitely going to see them a lot during the spring so a lot in april so i hope that this little addendum offers you a bit more information on what to wear if you are coming to paris in march april or may i hope that i've given you a little bit more insight kind of as to how to think about putting together outfits feel free to leave me any questions any comments i will always help you i'm always kind of there to do that that's that's one of the things i love i as i you know kind of mentioned the first time i came to paris you know i read all of these blogs and i thought i knew what i should be wearing and it was just like people like had blown it completely out of proportion right like there are just a few cultural things to keep in mind and then the rest is like use your own clothes um and so i really wish that i had uh kind of kept that more i wish i had known that uh, when i was coming so that's why i do these videos is to help you so let me know if you have any more questions or comments i hope you stay safe and i look forward to talking to you again soon all right bye